We're going to look a little bit different. We're going to take a break still from Galatians, uh, but there, there's, we have a special kind of a testimony that we want to share with you today. But before we dive into that, I want to read a couple passages of scriptures, and then um, this goes to a kind of a, a greater announcement, and yet also it has a spiritual bend to it. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds and uh, of heaven and over every living thing that moves on earth. And so when we look at this verse, just as a reminder, there's nothing else in God's created order that has the distinction of reflecting his image. You and I have that privilege. It's only reserved for humankind, mankind. And then when we look at Psalms 139, we look at even a closer definition of how that happens because God spoke them, created them into existence as he, as he breathed life into them. Uh, but as, afterwards, we see in Psalms 139, it says, for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together, where? In my mother's womb. And I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. Now, I read these verses because I want to bring to your awareness and attention that in November, there will be some ballot initiatives that you get to choose from uh, regarding God's spoken image of mankind, uh, specifically regarding when uh, a person becomes a person. And so I encourage you to look at that and read that and study that know what you're doing, and let your decisions be guided by God's word. There are, uh, there's two initiatives. There's actually a petition. One has already made the uh, ballot because of petition. One also is out here today uh, to look at our current laws because it, it, they're like in direct competition to each other, and they are Nebraska state constitution amendments. And so there's a, a website that you go to about the one that we have specifically here, NebraskaFamilyAlliance.org, uh, and then backslash protect women and children backslash. You can find that image, that link on our website. Uh, so if you want to look and read, uh, even here now, uh, you can study that a little bit so you know what you're signing if you choose to sign something here uh, today. Um, and there's uh, contact information. If you'd like to know how to, how to sign that later, you can... Uh, talk to me or one of the leaders, and we can direct you to the right person there. Um, but this is there is there's some ballot initiatives that are going to be there. And as as a church, as a church leader, I want you to be aware of what you're going to be looking at in November, and potentially what will be or won't be on ballots as uh, you go to the voting polls in November. And one thing, the reason why this we get to talk about this on on a Sunday and at church even is because we live in a country that is unique. We live in a country that lets our people decide what laws govern us. It's a unique system. And one of the things that we've definitely seen as a shift in our culture and in the making of our laws is that the things that God has spoken for us to live and rule our lives by in the Word well, we can let those things be spoken of as laws within our land. And so when new laws are uh, suggested and put forth before us, we as the church have an opportunity to speak into that so that our culture reflects what God has stated as rule for our life. You, you know, God has given us in his word and, and in the Old Testament 613 specific laws. He gave to his people laws. And so even as a church, I want to recognize that laws are important. God knew that the people would need laws to govern them and help them know what was right and what was wrong. And so as a church, especially in America, we get to speak into that process. And so when we see our culture establish laws that reflect God and his word and his image, then 
we get to rejoice in, in the fact that the, the collective people are seemingly living underneath maybe that rule. But when we see a shift in that and the laws don't represent what God has spoken to us, then it should be concerning to us, and it means that we have some more work to do. And, well, if you've been watching culture, if you've been watching American laws, it does look like the Christian voice, God's words and his rules, they seem to be going by the wayside. And so I just want to encourage you to be aware of some things coming up, and I'm asking you to continue to be praying for God's guidance, uh, be talking about these things. It's important. Uh, because our society, whether or not our laws say one thing or not, we're still called to live and surrender our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, but we have the freedom in this country to speak into that. And I want to encourage you, as best as you can, as much as you can, to continue to speak into that. Good with that? Let me pray for just these initiatives and these things. Uh, uh, And if you have any questions about anything... Uh, you can talk to myself or one of the leaders, um, but I want to pray just over our country and over, there's deadlines to this, so I just want to mention June 30th, I think everything has to be in and signed by most of the petitions. I am not up on all of this. This is my uh, ignorance a lot that I'm being educated in, um, need to get better at, but uh, there are deadlines here, so I just want to make sure that you're aware of those and uh, are acting expediently. So uh, let me pray. Father, thank you for the country that you've given us. Thank you for the laws that you have given us in your word. Thank you for the patterns that you've shown us in your word as to what it means to live surrendered to you, what it means to honor you with our words and with our actions. And uh, there's some things happening right now that we need to take some actions in. And uh, we might be aware of them, we might not be aware of them. And so, Father, I pray that if we're unaware that you would uh, make us aware and in a timely manner, that you would help us to act uh, individually and so that collectively, uh, as a nation even, we can honor you and bring you honor because uh, we live as a people who are surrendered to you. Uh, Father, forgive us where we have fallen uh, away. Forgive us when we have uh, looked at what you have told us in your word and we have uh, thumbed our nose at, at your directions, your rules. Uh, your laws. Uh, Father, uh, thank you for a spirit of repentance. Uh, I pray that revival would break out, that repentance would be made known in our country. But it starts, I know, with me, and it starts with us as a church, and it starts with our communities. And so, Father, just continue to call us to a spirit of surrender to your ways. Uh, Father, if there's anything that is represented here in this room, in our lives, that is not something you've spoken into uh, of of good favor or or something you want for us in our lives, Father, I pray that you would reveal that, that you would help us call that out, and that you would lead us to that spirit of repentance to be restored into the joy of union with Christ, union with you, uh, bringing honor and glory to you. And so, Father... uh, Thank you for uh, this time uh, that we get a look at your word, and specifically when we think about life and when it's conceived and, and, and when uh, you have spoken and formed someone. Uh, Father, uh, your word, I believe, is clear. And so, Father, I just pray that you would continue to protect those that are innocent, uh, protect those who don't have a voice, um, and God, that uh, you would move and work uh, again in ways that make us stand in awe. And so, God, thank you for this time. We give it into your hands. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, I'm going to invite Eugene Mahalski to come up here, and and we're going to have a conversation together. I don't know if you need this or want this or not, but um, when we we think about our stories, each one of us have a story. Uh, Each one of us have uh, events and things in our life where we have seen God move and work in different ways. Amen? Can, can you all, like, you, you look back and you're acknowledging, like, oh, yeah. I, I know God was there in this moment. And, um, and so, yeah, it's just a, Eugene has a, a story that he wants to share. Uh, so for the purpose of sharing today, tell us 
what that purpose is. That way everyone else here can yeah. hear your story as they begin to maybe think about and reflect on their story. Okay, yeah. Uh, first of all, I'm going to thank this church uh, for coming out and helping us move to Grandview. And uh, it just amazed me because... Uh, we didn't really, you know, I talked with you at the hospital and possibilities, you know. And then my uh, children, or there's two boys here, uh, they can help, but they're busy farming and stuff like that. And I thought I called them. He said, oh, Dad, I don't know, you know. And, uh, yeah, I said, okay, yeah. And uh, then uh, Barbara's son, too, says, well, I can get guys from work, you know. And then it turned out. Uh, I don't think anybody's coming, you know. And I was wondering, well, maybe it's going to be that way with the church here too, you know. And, and it's, but I had a gig to play there at the Accordion Festival, and so that kind of put it later in the day, like, you know, like at 5 o'clock we're going to do it. 5 o'clock? We're, uh, we're going to load everything and take it to Grandview? I don't know, you know. And so we come there a little bit earlier, and pretty soon... Daryl drove up, that's my oldest son, and he had a, had a flatbed there, and he backed it up. Oh, wow. At least we got one strong guy. I think he's <laughs> strong, too. But anyway, I, I knew he was going to be there. And anyway, uh, wow, about 5 o'clock, there's people everywhere. Yeah. And I, I was kind of like, well, you know, uh, well, well, you know what? And then it was going in this room, and that room, this way, and it was taking the bed apart, and there was drawers and things going up and down the stairs. We had steps, and oh boy, that's that's the reason we moved actually. And uh, then it just like a whirl when uh, you know somebody's pulling me over here. What do we do? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Oh, yeah, what do we do? You know, and uh, it was just kind of hectic and everything, but it was nice. I I liked this. You know, it was. Plus, stuff was happening fast. And, uh, you like, you know, you're saying you like to tell people what to do? <sighs> yeah. Is that, am I reading between the lines too much? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Somebody Sorry. Over here, I got humor. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, she tells me what to do, too. Yeah. Once in a while. Yeah. Okay. She's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I went and it was uh, mamas and papas and boys. And they were going to lift the couch, and I said, no, 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 you know, it's a little bit too much. And Daddy stepped in a little bit and said no. And anyway, they were sure willing to help. And, you know, it, it, it just kind of like, Lord, wow, you know, you come through. But he kind of makes us wait just a little bit so that we have our faith to grow, right? <laughs> yeah. And so it was, yeah. And so I want to thank you from the deep part of my heart, and uh, uh, it was great. Yeah. It, God works in wonderful ways, yeah. Yeah, so that move uh, to Grandview, there was a number of you here. If you helped, you know who you are. Uh, you can give a little smirk or whatever. I say thank you for being the body of Christ and helping one another and serving this capacity. But that uh, a move to Grandview of this nature, um, there's reasons for that sometimes. Most of the time, all the time. There's reasons for a move. We don't move just because, eh, right. I want to move. You know, who wants to pack up <laughs> years worth of boxes of stuff and try to move it? And then downsize. So what, what led you to make this decision to uh, move to Grandview? Yes, uh, it, this is about a month ago. And all of a sudden there's some pain. And you know, Barbara had a lot of pain. And we didn't know for sure what it was or anything. But it just kept getting worse. Every day, it just get a little worse, and she hung in there, you know, well, let's go to the doctor, and then it came uh, really bad, and uh, we were struggling, and she dropped to the floor, and I couldn't pick her up uh, from my uh, time of being strong. It's a long past, and anyway, uh, yeah, so we called the ambulance and went to uh, uh, the hospital, and then wasn't long, and she was loaded up to go to Grand Island. And it turned out that uh, she had to have a surgery on the colon. And it was uh, due to a, a 
uh, operation she had before it had a scar on it, it caused it to kink just like a garden hose would kink. And you know what happens when a garden hose kinks? You don't get no movement. And so the pain was building up and it's just like, I often think of how it felt when you get a good punch in the gut, you know? Wow, that buckles you over, you know? And I couldn't imagine the pain she was feeling. And uh, then when we got there, we found out that it could have burst much like an appendix or appendicitis, you know? And you get poison in your system. So we just barely got there on time. And we uh, thank the Lord God for that, too, you know? And he, he works. And I think a lot of times... Uh, we're, we need to be taken down uh, in some way, some form, to wake up and uh, realize God has something in store for us. And you know, and uh, so I think when just reflecting, you and I, we've talked about this before, and many of you have been praying for for Barb and and Eugene through this process. And if you're not on our prayer list, our email list, I want to give you an opportunity to go ahead and. And let us know. You can do that through the Connect card but, uh, or send us an email. But Susan sends out those requests. If they come in, then it goes out in email form so we can be praying uh, more readily and quickly. Now, if you don't check your email, that's kind of a problem. Maybe this is a catalyst for you to check your email. But um, there's, those requests go out. And so if you want, many of you were praying for Barb during this time. <laughs> And so there is just this en encouragement to be involved. If you're, if you're hearing this for the first time, maybe this is a catalyst to say, hey, I want to be involved in the lives of others who make up the body of Christ. And it's through prayer. And so I'm, I'm going to challenge you and call you to that too. Mm -hmm. um, so they found uh, there was a blockage and severe pain was then relieved. How did recovery go? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, well, they let us out. They let you yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> and we were glad, you know. It's, wow, we're going home. It's, it's over. <laughs> it's not like they pushed no. you out, by the way. <laughs> yeah. About the time we got about halfway home, mm, it was getting kind of bad already. And uh, got into the house. Uh, it was bad. And uh, daughter-in-law, Susan, was there. She says, what did you come home for, you know? She called the ambulance immediately. I mean, she, it was bad. And so back to the ER, and it was kind of a struggle there. And then once they got pain kind of halfway under control, we decided to leave her there. Well, I didn't leave her there, but <laughs> yeah, I didn't manage to be able to stay there. Anyway, yeah, it was another couple of weeks in a swing bed here in, in Oregon. So that added up to about a month of just being under. Yeah. And so we made a, well, let's see, there was a stairs there. They said, no stairs, absolutely no stairs, because she had a little dizziness, and and uh, and we we had a golden retriever. And when you start up the stairs, she'd take off and pass you, you know, <laughs> and just about knock you over. I thought, no, 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 that's not going to work. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, so we... Uh, and so all uh, along the way in this, in, your uh -huh. in the recovery, in the process, you've had, uh, you and I have talked about just the amount of trust that you've had in the Lord about, I don't know what's next, I'm just taking the next mm -hmm. moment, I'm just taking the next day, uh, you know, it, it looks challenging. And so uh, it was, we were talking, one of the points to share is that we all face difficult situations. We face things that we just, we don't know why, we don't understand. The pain is uncomfortable. Um, but there's still this call in the midst of uncertainties to continue to trust in the Lord, to continue to um, be faithful, even in those moments where it doesn't look like <laughs> things are going your way. And so we've talked about that's part of your story, part of your heart in in throughout this process that you wanted to share. So um this move, though, uh, it wasn't just uh, something you said, well, we don't want to stay in our home anymore. There's actually a calling there, too, there. There's a purpose there. And so share a little bit about what you sensed God trying to do and move and work within you as you uh, sought to follow him. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, yeah, uh, moving, uh, well, we're moving to a closed community, kind of. And, uh, but I, you can go visit anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really a nice place. Uh, You're upstairs just, right by the chapel, so right, come on really. up. 
Yeah. I, I hear uh, the ice cream machine works most days. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, I was, uh, well, during those times, it's kind of, Lord, why? Why have all that suffering, you know? And, and you, you, you said the same thing. It's like, why, Lord, you know? And we know other people in other countries, they kind of live in suffering, you know, where we're kind of fat cats here. And uh, anyway, uh, I don't know. I usually wake up around 3 or 4 in the morning, and if God wants to talk to me, that's usually the time because I don't have nothing on my mind. And uh, I was just thinking, now, all of you, you have your thoughts. Is there a time when you don't have the thoughts? I mean, I'm thinking all the time. I don't know about you guys, but I've talked to different people. They say, well, yeah, I got something on my mind all the time. You know, it's just going, going, going. So what are the words that God has intermingled with those? And uh, like three or four o'clock, I, I kind of tend to think so because uh, I don't have much thought about three o'clock in the morning. Maybe you don't either, you know. And uh, so, yeah, so we're around three or four o'clock in the morning. And it was just thought in my mind, well, gosh, we're going to Grandview and there's a lot of chances for uh, you know, do a little talking to people about the gospel and, and things. And, yeah, I think we could do that, you know. And, but I never said much to Barbara about it. And, and then she came to me and she said the same thing. And I thought, well, hey, you know, this could be. And so we are kind of confirmed that going there, that we will give it a thought, but with God's help, because we don't know each person and... And uh, so that's kind of what, uh, you know, we, we thought, well, we'll build relationships there and become friends. And, and a lot of times friends trust you and maybe they'll come, you know. So, uh, yeah, and then the rest is up to God. Yeah. And I think each of us find ourselves with people that we know, people that we cross our paths with and intersect with. And, and one of the, the things that we've talked about is, the heart is that where he finds himself, where Barb finds herself at, is is a place and an opportunity to share words of hope. And so the, the encouragement here for us all and reminder, the challenge really is for each of us to look at life with that same perspective that Eugene's feeling this calling to, to say, look, I'm wherever I'm at, I want to be used by the Lord. And so uh, for him and Barb, it's, it's at Grandview. And so the, they want to use those opportunities to uh, speak into the lives of those there. And the challenge then for us is to do that the same. Uh, it might not be at a, a physical facility um, or where you reside. Maybe it is in your home, um, but maybe it's somewhere else where you can just really be open to what God would have you do, what, you would ha- what he'd have you say. So now you have some past experiences also that speak into you know, how you came to this trust in God and how you've been open to hearing what God wants to do for you. So speak into just a, a few of those examples. Um, yeah, uh, well, one example would be, you know, uh, the, we'd done uh, at Burrell, we was at First Christian, excuse me, First Christian Church in Burwell. And then Bran, you know, the bikes across Nebraska. And we decided the church that we would witness there and send us out by twos. You know, one person, sometimes we lose our focus, our, our nerve, you know. But with two people, you got to, huh. It's this even person biblical. goes a step, and then you take a step, and pretty yeah. soon you're there. And uh, so we went out by twos, and most of them, uh, mostly bikers coming in, and we were passing out energy bars and water because they were thirsty from them. Uh, it was a hot day. And anyway, most of the people that you talk to, you start talking about, you know, uh, the gospel, they look down. Most of them do. And it kind of stops things. You know, you know they don't want to hear it, but they're being kind because they got that candy bar there, you know, <laughs> yeah, well, no, not really, but anyway, that's kind of been my experience, you know, most people, they go down, but sometimes you hear later on that that person uh, was approached by somebody else, so God was working, and then we don't know, 
but uh, I know that it's not over, but it is our duty, and it's a small one, actually. I mean, if they look down, what does it hurt you? Where does it hurt me? It kind of is a disappointment, maybe. But I'll tell you, the worst experience I had, and it's probably the best, both ways. Anyway, this one guy, we decided not to tell his name, because everybody knows him. No, <laughs> not really. Anyway. Names have been changed, <laughs> and, and words have been, phrases have been said to left, leave yeah. you guessing whether or not uh, it's somebody you know or not. So, yeah. Yeah. anyway, go ahead. So I went out <laughs> in my, uh, with the, the minister of our church. We decided to just go out, and people I know, you know, just witness, you know, and just do it. So we decided on Sunday afternoon. It was hot. Uh, I had my mother's car. I don't know why, but it didn't have air conditioning. It was hot. And we well, it was going different neighbors that I knew and friends and stuff. And, and we came to this one uh, place. I kind of knew him. We went to school in grade school. We were together. Anyway, went in there and had Bible in my hand. He was, he was in the car and uh, went in there and asked him for a drink of water and if we could have some water. Yeah, yeah, he said, I guess you can. And he went and got the water and gave it to me. And then he said, get the ah, out of here. You know, just strong. He, just, uh, he said a bunch of other things too, but anyway. <laughs> There's kids yeah. in the room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, you know, okay. It's, you know, with all the peace we get and the joy from serving the Lord, there's always that one at the, big, at the end that says persecution. Yeah? And it's there. And so, story goes on, uh, I don't know, maybe a month later, or, or I don't know for sure. But anyway, I was at uh, Orchardlands with my mother, and she went in to shop alone, and I, she just wanted to grab something, so I stayed on the car. And... Uh, Pretty soon here comes this car roaring in, drives right up to me, and it was this guy. He jumps out of the car, and he comes to my window, and I thought, ooh, ooh, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I rolled the window down, and, and he says, Eugene, he says, I just come from the doctor, and I got cancer, and I'm going to die. Would you pray for me? Wow. You know, how did he know? I mean, he's going down the, the road, highway speed or whatever, and to turn in there to come right up to my car. I had a different car besides my mother's. <laughs> <laughs> How did he know? You know, it. I, I think if somebody was moving it in, I don't know why. Anyway, yeah, I'll pray for you. And then he left. And I thought, well, do I go to his house or do, you know, what do I do? You know, and I kind of hum hauled around, you know, and stuff. And uh, then I heard, oh, yeah, he's in the house bill. So I book up there. I go to the room. He's dead. And missed by chance. And then I, I don't know, about a, maybe a month later, I don't know. Anyway. I was in the basement of our church, we was teaching uh, kids' praise, and there was this grandmother come for one of the kids, and that was this guy's former wife. And so I got talking to her, I said, well, gosh, I wanted to you know, bring him to the Lord, and uh, he was dead. And she looked at me and says, Eugene, I was there, and he came to the Lord. I visited him. That was a tough one, but it was... You know, so, uh, yeah, it just, it amazes me, yeah. And, we could, uh, we could talk for hours, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to give you the opportunity, if you want to visit up and grab, grab some ice cream and go up to their room, they'd love to, they love the company. Um, this is what the body of Christ does. We share our lives with one another, we share our stories with one another, and in doing so, we encourage and we challenge one another. And so that's partly why our mission statement as a church, we gather as the body of Christ, and there's a purpose in that. We don't just do it because it's something that we just check off on our calendar on Sunday morning. Uh, there's a purpose to gathering as the body of Christ, and, and we, do, uh, we share in this. So there's opportunities to grow in our relationship with Christ, so we have classes, but 
Sometimes those conversations will help you grow more than, I don't know, maybe a year's worth of classes. Who knows? But those, cha- those conversations that you have with the purpose of growing in a relationship with the Lord so that when you're sent out two by two, which is biblical, Jesus did that. So, um, you know, you can be prepared to do that or whether it's a one-on-one conversation, you can go with the gospel of Christ. That's why as a church we exist. And those are things that we challenge you to, I encourage you to visit with him more, to learn more some of his stories. You'll have the opportunity to share some of your stories and, and be mutually encouraged. But was there anything else that you wanted to share today, Eugene? Well, I, I would like to uh, go forth from the church, uh, have your blessing, have a prayer, and maybe accountability to people that know me and say, hey, how's it going? And if I haven't been doing anything, I might look down, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm a sinner just like the rest of you. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, I would thank you each personally, but then pride would come in. You'd say, hey, I, when I was there, I did a good thing. And, you know, and that's the worst sin in the world is pride. Yeah, I'd like you to come up, honey. And no. Barb, Barb, uh, come on, yeah, Barb. Yeah, yeah. You it's okay, Dusty. Too. <laughs> you can come up. Well, yeah. <laughs> what I want to do uh, to close out our time today is just uh, say a prayer over them, uh, invite you to pray also, and then, um, as Eugene mentioned, this is this is what we do as the body of Christ. We hold one another accountable. There's encouragement. So you've seen baptisms take place. We hold one another accountable. When life uh, situations change and we're asking for accountability in that, that's what the body of Christ does. We pray for one another. And so we want to do that today specifically. I invite you to join uh, together with me as we do that. And then um, we'll dismiss. So, Father, thank you uh, for Eugene and for Barb, for everyone here. Uh, God, the way that you have brought together a body of Christ uh, to accomplish the purpose of drawing closer to you, to becoming equipped in, in ways to, to share the gospel, uh, to receive encouragement. And uh, Lord, may you just continue to do a work that only we can give credit to you. Uh, that uh, God, may you remove pride from our lives, from our hearts. Uh, may you give us wisdom. May you give us words to speak. Uh, Father, each of us. Father, for the facility at Grandview, uh, again, we just ask your guidance and that you would continue to put people there that can speak hope, that can speak encouragement into those that reside there, uh, specifically for Eugene and for Barb. Use them as your instruments uh, as they have taken up. This is their residence. This is where they live and they breathe. May their testimony, may their life uh, speak volumes. Uh, to those that gathered, both in ways to maybe bring someone there uh, for the very first time to surrendering to you as Lord and as Savior of their life, uh, or maybe just continued encouragement as they walk uh, the days that they have ahead. Father, thank you uh, again for this opportunity to worship together. May you uh, lead us out of this place uh, of gathering. May you scatter us to wherever we may be uh, so that you can do a work that brings people unto yourself. And God, we we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, Stick around, encourage, uh, have some coffee, encourage one another.